So Loneris, a developer of Profile Service, has recently made something called Profile Store, which is a data store module for saving player data easily. And this module is a successor to the mentioned Profile Service, which I'm going to overview in this video. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe for the channel, and let's just get to it. So here we have the Profile Store by Loneris, which again is a successor module to Profile Service. And right off the bat you have a link to the GitHub repository, where you can actually get the code from GitHub. But basically, Profile Store is a Roblox data store wrapper that streamlines auto saving, session locking and a few other features for the game developers. And the source code runs on a single module script. And down here also have the documentation and a link to the module library that we are going to check out in a minute. And also a note, if you are making a tutorial for this module, please contact me and I might share the link here. So if any other developer is watching this, then you basically know what to do. And you also have a donation link if you want to support the developer. But let's just go through the forum post and see how the profile store works. And the profile store loads and caches data from a data store key on a single Roblox game server, prevents other game servers from accessing the data to soon by establishing a session lock and handling session lock conflict between servers swiftly while not using too many data store and messaging service API calls. And the data units saved by the profile store are called profiles, which can be accessed in-game by starting a session and during an active session you gain access to a table which will either be saved to the data store on the next autosave or when you manually end the session, for example through code. And the profile store is primarily player data oriented and by design fit for common use cases where each game player would have a single profile dedicated to storing their game progression. Session locking addresses the issue of data access from more than one game server which can cause item dupes in games with trading. By keeping track of which game server is currently caching data and gracefully switches ownership from one server to the other without failing new session requests. Profile store can be used for non-player data usage although the session locking is not ideal for quick writing from several game servers. And now the profile store module functions try to resemble the Roblox's API for a sense of familiarity to Roblox's developers. Methods with the async keywords yield until a result is ready, for example the start session async method as well, while others do not. And something kind of important is this sentence right here, saying that a profile store is not designed and never will be for in-game leaderboards or any kind of global state. So that's on the how does it work paragraph and here we have the changes from the profile service. Where again profile store is a successor to profile service, it uses very similar mechanisms for handling session lock which has been improved to be more responsive at handling conflicts between servers. And here is a list of significant changes. And you have a default autosave period which was increased from 30 to 300 seconds. Nearly 10 times fewer data store calls consume less server resources which basically just means more scalable and the profile store relies on autosaves to store latest data and resolve session conflict in a single update async call. And now with the addition of messaging service, profile store can now autosave slower while still reacting to the external game servers trying to take the session lock. And under normal circumstances, profile store should outperform profile service in a session conflict resolution time. Then there is the more performance, more server friendly point with messaging service which helps resolve session conflicts much faster. Profile Store tries to strain Roblox services less when things inevitably do go wrong with the exponential backoff, as well as timeouts and cancel conditions. And now the outdated 7 second data store queue replaced, where an internal data store API colloquy is needed to ensure that calls are satisfied in order. And Roblox's data stores have changed since the profile service was released and the 7 second queue was replaced with a queue that performs call to the same data store key as soon as all previous calls finish. So basically the 7 second data store queue was replaced with a different queue that basically just performs better. And something that was missing in the profile service, which I shown that Max did it separately, was low tires for auto completion. And this basically means that the profile store is type check. And this will help make fewer typos while writing code with profile store. Then on API cleanup, we find Functions and variables name have been changed to be shorter and more conventional. And a removal of meta tags 
in favor of profile than the last saved data. And meta tags have been a piece of data exclusively used to verify data that has been successfully saved to the data store. And now the last saved data will also satisfy this purpose. Every time the data from the profile is saved to the data store, the last saved data will be updated with the version of the data that has been successfully saved to the data store. So I'm guessing that this last saved data is basically used as a cache to validate the data that's being saved to the profile. And here we have a new profile messaging system replacing global updates, where the global updates was a complicated system for writing to profiles regardless of whether a server is currently running a session for them. Now we have a message async method which is much easier to use and has a fast delivery time by utilizing the messaging service. And you can use this for features like in-game player gifting where the data delivery is crucial. And right here we have an on save on last save and on after save signals which are useful for altering and reacting to data along profile service data store requests. And you can see that there is basically a lot of updates and improvements from profile service. And these are just the significant ones. But anyways, now about the should I switch from profile service paragraph. And again, this is kind of important for now. Where profile service hasn't been used in a lot of production yet, but it has been fully tested by similar tools that allow profile service to stay mostly bug free. And you can use this at your own risk and forward any bugs to the creator of this module. Basically under this the forum post. We'll try to fix the bugs super quickly. And it might be a good idea to let all projects keep using profile service and start using profile store for brand new ones, but if you are feeling risky. So yeah. And profile store data store profiles are backwards compatible with profile service, where the profile service profiles should load the same data store using the same keys in profile store without an issue. But profile service might have issues loading the same profiles again if you start using the profile store message async method. You should fill the Roblox Studio tests with API access before pushing the change Alive. And lastly here is a code example, which I'm going to get in a second, but here are also other resources, like the replica service, which I also should overview at some point, and again the donation, which is going to take you to this Roblox game. So again, if you want to support the creator, you can do so right here. But now I'm going to move into the documentation really quickly, which has basically everything that we just read, but there is also the API on top right here. And here are all of the different methods, as well as events and basically callbacks. So if you don't know what, for example, the message async does, you can go on to here and basically read the explanation. And you also have code examples in this documentation. And there is also the tutorial, which again I'm going to show later, with again the code. Then a troubleshooting tab, and this is mostly if you run into any problems. For example, like not enabling the API services, or the profile taking too long to load, where you for example have possible fixes. Then how the data store is used in this module, as well as using the profile store, for developer products. But right now let me cover how to get the module and it's as simple as just going to the link right here and getting the model by pressing on the get model button. But I already own this. So let's just jump into Roblox Studio right now. So once I'm in an empty base plate, I would need to go into the toolbox my models and the profile store right here, which I can simply insert and then just place under the server script service. And before I use this module, I also need to enable Studio access to the API services by going to the Home tab, then Game Settings, and under the Security, check the Enable Studio access to API services option right here, and just simply press on Save. And this time I'm not going to do a project structure like I did in my profile service video since I simply just don't want to bore you guys. But basically I would need to add a server script into the server script service and I just name this one profile manager. And for simplicity I'm just going to put this module inside of the profile manager script. And now I can go back to the dev forum and simply just copy the example code and just paste it in. Obviously need to change the require path to script that profile store. And like the profile service script, right here we have the data template. And this template is the data that we are going to assign to a player. And this data can be anything, I could for example just write whatever, but I need to make sure that this is a number, string, a table or any other variable type. But for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to use total playtime, which is also going to need a joint 
out. But this is just for later and I'm going to continue with overviewing the code now. So I like to have services at the top but basically we have a player store right here which uses the new constructor from the profile store which gets the store name and the template. And here you can see a lot of different data types. Then you have the profiles with the player type which is a type of the I'm guessing whatever the star session async returns. But the main function is going to be on player added where you get the profile on the start session async from the player that user id and then the cancel is a callback function which is checking if the player is the descendant of the players then handling the new profile session or failure to start it and this checks if the profile basically just exists and if it doesn't it basically just kicks the player but here you have the add user id in like the profile service and a reconcile function which fills in missing variables from the profile template and this is optional and now this reconcile is if i for example had this profile template running and all of the players had this data if i suddenly were to add another variable call it whatever then the reconcile would basically update every profile from the player that joins to also include this variable in their data but now there is a function connected to the on session end signal which removes the player profile from the session and just kicks the player and this is again for a manual session end for example like right here then again we check if the player is the descendant of the players then we assign the profile to the session and say that the profile was loaded and right here we have an example of giving the player 100 cash and also a comment saying you should set cash in the profile template and use the profile then reconcile otherwise you have to check whether data that cash is not nil and this is mostly if we didn't have cache in this profile template right here we basically check if the cache exists then we basically just want to add it but right now we don't really need to do anything since we have the cache right here and lastly there is a fail safe we also connect the on player added to the player added event as well as do a player removing function which basically just ends the session for the profile okay but let's for example just print out the profile whenever the player joins so if i do a playtest right now it's going to say that the roblox api services is available meaning we basically just enable it from the game settings and the data will be saved then it set profile loaded for is pause and we have the profile basically right here where we have the data the first session time as well as the profile key the info then the last save data which was like i said the cache and then these events then the profile store itself then metadata then a session with a join id and place id how many sessions are running then the user ids and on empty global updates as well as the eSmog option. So basically you can see that a lot of this stuff is used as a validator for different systems like the session locking, messaging service and so on. So now I'm just going to cover the changes from the profile store and the profile service managers. So right here I added this script which I'm going to disable and just really quickly basically compare them. So like previously we have the profile template then we get the profile service, the players and the profile store where in this case we get it right here. Here. And just to compare it, it would look like this, where we have the name of the store and the profile template. Then we set the profile session, basically here and in the profile store. And then we have the on player added function. So this is a gift cache, then do something with loaded profile, where we basically just get the profile, the same as on this line, and we check if the profile actually exists. Where we have the add user ID, the reconcile, the callback, and then we check if the player is the descendant of the player service, which was previously a method right here. Then we load the profile and do something on the profile loaded, which we don't really have that function since everything is more simple. And the release or the end session. So overall I would say that the profile store example code is actually a little bit better written than the profile service was, and this is definitely also more simple. And you can also see the similarities. But lastly I'm just going to show how to save data or modify data in the profile store with the joint at and the total playtime. So on the join that, as I did in my previous video, I'm just going to do profile then data that join that and you can see that it's auto completed and it's also showing that it's a number value. And I'm going to set this to os.clock since this gets the current CPU time in seconds. And right now in the player removing, I'm just going to copy this line, then just place it right here and set this one to zero. And this is just again for a just in case. But before I reset the join that, I basically just want to do profile that data that total playtime and basically just calculate the current time, which is going to be again as that clock minus the time that the player joined the session at. 
And lastly, after the player leaves, I'm just going to print out the profile that data. So here I joined the game and then I'm going to leave. And here it said that the title add a number to a table. So, oh. So now if I change the type of the variable to be a number now from a table, I will basically need to set it to need and do a playtest again. Then it's going to update the total playtime to be a number. After I basically do the playtest. But now I can remove the line of code right here. And while this is a number now, it should be working properly. So I'm just going to walk for a little bit, then just stop the playtest, and here it added the data, and here you can see that the total playtime is around a five and a half seconds. Where if I were to do another playtest, and this time I'm going to wait for a little bit more, then I can just stop. Now it's going to add the data to the previous one, where you can see that this is saying 14 now. And the start of the session was at 0.44, and the end was at 0.53. So this added around 9 seconds to the previous 5. So again, saving the data as as simple as just making a reference to the profile.data. And if you wanted to have it in a different function, you could just make a call function, just name this one, do something with profile, which is going to get the profile of the same type as basically this line. Where now if I do profile that data that for example var and set it to false, you can see that this is going to autocomplete. And right now I could call this function in for example right here and set the profile variable. Where originally this value is set to true, but if I do a playtest, you can see that after changing the data, the variable is going to be false. So overall modifying the data is pretty easy. But if you want a more advanced project structure, I recommend that you watch my tutorial about profile service. Since I also give more information on making the saving data a bit easier, where everything is basically written in a module script, that you can require and modify the profile stable, or simply update the data through different methods. And lastly, let's for example connect a function to one of the events then on after save, which I can connect a function to. And this one is just going to say print data updated for player and display name. Now this is going to say this every time. If I for example do a playtest, my character leaves the game, or maybe even on auto updates. Or I can simply just do profile then save. So here this should change the variable, then save the profile, and the saving is usually going to take some time. So I think you should print out the profile loaded, then the profile, and lastly the data was updated for this pod. So this is going to be the last playtest, and here we have the profile loaded, then the profile itself, and the message saying that data was updated for me right here. So if you wanted to manually save then, you could do so from the profile then save method. But yeah, that will basically be everything for the profile store tutorial. But yeah, lastly I just wanted to make an announcement that I live stream on the weekends. So feel free to hop on if you have time. But yeah, so as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support your channel. Also check out my Patreon page. And thanks everyone for watching and see you guys.